murderers and criminals and thieves and crooks, who destroyed whole nations and races of people and enslaved whole people. Talk to us about moral behavior. This is an amazing situation. <laughs> How do we let these people who have invested billions and billions of dollars in the development of weapons of death and who, who hold the world in, in constant terror, that in their madness they will unleash unprecedented death and devastation upon the earth. How do we let them talk to us about Marvel? These little pop guns that our young people use out here don't even measure on the Richter, Richter scale of, of death instruments compared to what the white males have developed. And yet we let these people convince us that we are the greatest endangerment to peace and safety in the world. Can you believe that? <laughs> what do we do? Here is this man who sits on top of the greatest death-making arsenal in the world and is going to come and talk to black people about crime in the street. <laughs> and we sit there and listen to that stuff. And then who's going to talk to us about family values? You know, it amazes me, you know, because we even hear some of people talk about that, too. We got to have values. Mm. And their values are important, but it's kind of the way it comes across, you know. But you never hear them say, well, what kind of values do we have? How, how do black values differ so much from the other people's values? You would think that uh, black mothers and fathers are sitting there training their children to be criminals. That seems to be what it is. <laughs> What's implied there, you know, go up, son, I want you to be a drug dealer and shoot people on the street. This is the implication you get that uh, black families are coaching their children into this. In fact, to be a bit facetious, I ask, how do, how, how do these values differ? How do the values of the black and black criminal really differ from the average, normal, law abiding white man? You mean uh, white people don't want BMWs? <laughs> they don't want uh, Lexus? They don't want all of these machines and things? The way black people want them? They don't value these things? You mean white people don't value sex? White people don't value, you know, having children? Why is it that I, I value for sex, I value for love? I value for cars, I value a good housing, I value a good food. How is that so fundamentally different from the values that they're talking about? What values are you talking, is he talking about that we don't have or that we have that they don't have? You know what values that he, he really talked about, which is the reason why you never hear them mention? They want you to have those kind of values where you go out and just kill yourself die quiet without protest. You should not have children you cannot take care of. And then they see to it that you can't do what? Take care of them. Yeah. Then they want you to be moral and not have it. So what is what kind of program is that? It's a program for what? Genocide. Genocide. A white man's morality is a morality of genocide and death. I'm telling you. And it hides behind an appearance of being good. But when you really look at it, you'll see behind it in terms of white folk, it is, it is hiding evil. And what makes them angry, what is making Quail angry, is the fact that despite all of the things they do in unemploying black men and creating the kind of problems that they do, we keep what? Reproducing. We keep staying what? Alive. And that is called being immoral. And we're going to preach, be preached to about that. They have a conference over here on uh, population control. Again, lecturing to the third world. Well, I'm for population control. 
time for reducing the population. Let's remove all the Europeans from the world. <laughs> yeah, you know, it never seems to occur to many people. When they, you know, we automatically assume when they talk about population control, too many people, they talk about who? African people. Well, you, if you're talking about reducing population, why not reduce white folks? It's the same as the reduction of population. Isn't it? <laughs> And move more black people into Europe. Let's take that over. They, they've been taking over our territory. Why not? They say, yeah, that's what they hate. You know? <laughs> but always, you'll see New York Times, you know, putting a picture on Africa, put a good picture on, you know, South America somewhere. What about the Europeans? Well, the, the world is outstripping, the world population is outstripping the capacity of the earth to take care of people. Well, couldn't that be the result of the fact that there are some very, very, very greedy people <laughs> on this earth? That if we develop the values of sharing, we can take care of more people. But you got some people here who are a small fraction of the world's population who consume the largest fraction of the world's resources. Yeah. Small. And you see them everywhere. Even though they may be, they may, the richest parts of uh, uh, the richest segment of their population, the top 10% has maybe 90% of the wealth. So the other 90% has to scramble for the 10% that's left. Who should be gotten rid of in that situation? Yeah. It's like a person that comes in and robs everything you got. So, well, you don't have enough to eat, therefore I must get rid of you. <laughs> but we're falling for that. We're falling for that. And the game is going that way. No one is talking about the greed, the overconsumption, the hoarding of wealth. No one is talking about people who like jobs or, or Walton who just died here and others who earned supposedly seven, eight billion dollars and who paid their workers minimum wage. A wage that, that uh, they can't live on. No one talks about why McDonald's must sell every hamburger in the damn world and not allow moms and pops and other people to engage in that trade. No one talks about the Walmart that just goes down across this country and destroys cities and towns and destroys businesses and destroys the whole spirituality of towns and cities and creates a mall culture for America and stretches from one end of the highway to the other these gaudy signs with all these fast food joints. It is not the values of African people that should be discussed here, but the values of those people who run this society that should be discussed. Those values such that they think they have a right to take up all of the world's resources and use all the world's resources. What kind of values are those? What kind of values leads a man to want to have eight and ten billion dollars that he can never use and utilize and dismiss workers and, and, and send families into bankruptcy and children into salvation? What kind of values are they? Why don't we discuss those kind of values? Why I'm a American. Don't 
of African Americans ain't African the talk show that proves without a shadow of a doubt that the so called African American didn't find his way to America locked in the trunk of a ship. I'm your host, Buck Wylam. My none of my co hosts are here yet, so we're just gonna go on with the show and keep it moving. Uh, I'm here, Buck. Where are you, you hear at? me, Buck? I'm I'm here, I'm on the phone. I've heard the songs and everything. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, cool. All right, well, uh, I'm going to introduce you first, Rick Moon, since you did such a good job on that boule bleach out on Umar Johnson last night. That was off the hook, brother. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. And uh, I hope that all the people out there uh, looked at a few of those videos that we mentioned last night and took into consideration of all the stuff that I was saying about this guy and, and how he's not as great an influence on our people as everybody makes him out to be. As a matter of fact, like I said uh, yesterday, uh, you know, he's called the Prince of Pan-African, but I I think he's the pimp of Pan-Africanism myself. Well, before we go on, let's uh, open up with some other stuff. That sound song you heard at the beginning of the show was called Found, Lost and Found by Byron Lennar. Nice song talking about the American people and before that you heard Dr. Amos Wilson reawakening the African spirit now some people out there listening and listening on the podcast might say if you're so against Africa why would you play Amos Wilson's reawakening the African spirit 
first of all, I have nothing against Africa. I'm sure Africa is a wonderful place. I'm sure it is. And I'm sure the people who are from there would attest from that. I don't have nothing against Africans at all. I'm just saying that I have a deep love and respect for my people, the Americans are here. And that's who I'm going to speak up for, and that's who this show is for. The African spirit, African is a term created by people. And when they created that term, what was going on? Who was that term sent to? Who was that term for? Who came up with that term? Africa and what did it mean and what became of those people because I can explain what I'm saying and that's why this Umar Johnson thing is very important and listen to Rick because he's going to finish it off tonight we can't be playing with these terms because when we play with these terms we put ourselves under a spell we say it then we do it we have no choice because the language that we speak and the words that are given to us are used to confuse us and to keep us in this confusion. That's the only reason we're here for, so we can open up communications. What are you talking about? Explain it to us. And so hopefully, if you have any questions, that's why we open up the lines. If you have any questions, ask them. We may not know. You may know. But share it with us. And that's why we're going to share with you. So I say African spirit because Dr. Amos Wilson and a lot of other brothers and sisters that you hear speak they were they came up in that system just like we did they came up in that exact same system they took what they could to try to make it be, the better for us and that's why I play Amos Wilson that's why I play Bobby Wright I'm not tripping off the terms but they are talking about us the soul people and and hopefully you can hear the soul in Amos Wilson he bad am I right Rick Hey, more right as you can be. Hey, I agree. I think Amos Wilson is the bomb. <laughs> right. And so because he say African, that doesn't mean we against him. We, we're we just making the, we're taking what he have and we're making it better. We're polishing it up. So he was saying African. So he was taught that African. We were too. But further study revealed that that's bullshit. So now who is who are they talking to? Amos Wilson is from Mississippi. Mississippi the place we're all black folks scared of. Black people don't want to go there. African Americans don't want to go there. Mississippi. That is the heart. Mississippi River runs right through there and almost ends there, down in New Orleans. Who are those people? Those are your people. And we keep looking. We don't look at them. We look across the water because we think we're from over there. And that has to stop. So, uh, Amos Wilson, reawakening the African spirit. Go to African American Thing, African.org. Send us a donation. I'll send that out to you. Nice piece. As a matter of fact, if you send a do- donation of five or more, I'll send you two Amos Wilsons. Reawakening the African spirit, and he got so many. Whatever one I send you, you're going to be like, thank you. So support us. This is a listener supported radio program. Support us. I really appreciate it, and I thank you guys for what you guys have done so far. All of you. Thank you. Okay, Rick. Uh, Dr. Umar Johnson, you, you have you gotten any feedback off of that from last night? Uh, I got a little bit, uh, but not, not very much, nothing uh, significant. Uh, one guy suggested, you know, told me that, uh, that he wears kente cloth, which, yeah, once in a while, you might see him with it on. And another guy uh, challenged me on the Lumumba thing, <clears throat> which uh, I'm not too worried about that either. And, but outside of that, the response has been pretty good. Yeah. I think uh, I think we're in a time frame now where people want the truth. People want to hear it, you right. know? Right. Uh, you know, people want people tired of the people tired of running around. You know, people tired of walking around confused, running around confused, not knowing anything. So, man, go ahead and finish it up, man. Go ahead and knock out uh, Dr. Umar Johnson, Boule Bleach Out, Part Two, by Rick Moon. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, 
from last night, I just want to go over a little bit of the things that uh, we talked about last night for the, all the folks that wasn't uh, listening or haven't heard the uh, the re uh, broadcast of it uh, on the YouTube or the wherever. Uh, we were talking about Dr. Umar Johnson and his effect on the so-called African American community and the way that he is bringing down the African American, so-called African American community. And uh, what I'm what I'm saying is that uh, he's very arrogant in what he says. He never gives any credit at all to the real indigenous people of this land. Uh, he gives all the credit to his, to the people that he says he has something against. I mean, you, you listen to him talk about his education, all European. Uh, I was listening today, uh, he was talking about the fundraiser that he was doing uh, for that school that he was building. I wanted to talk a little bit about that school too and get people's opinion on what they think about that. But uh, he was he was talking about all the people that were helping. He was talking about guys like chancellors and deans and teachers, students, preachers. I mean, these are the people that he was talking, supposedly talking against. But he's giving them all the credit for helping him out, you know, in this fundraiser. And another question that I have is, uh, why would, I mean, what do you think their agenda is? These people that are, these scholars and chancellors and stuff, what do you think their agenda was? And they work for that same European system that he talks against. I mean, you know, I, I just don't get it, man. Could, is there anybody that could, you know, hit me to what's going on? Because I, I don't really understand. It's, it's very confusing to me. And I know if I'm confused, that there are plenty of other people out there that's confused about this guy. Phone but, lines are open at phone lines are open at six zero five five six two thirty one forty. If anybody can answer that question, and will that be? Have we seen this before in the community? Have, have we seen this before in the community? Have we seen this before? Have we seen this type of behavior before in the community? And how did it turn out for us? Obviously, not good. Go ahead, Rick. Uh, okay, uh, there's a couple of more videos that I didn't get to talk about uh, yesterday, uh, things that he was talking about. Uh, there was one video called uh, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson on the uh, American government, the NWO and the Illuminati. And he, in this, he talked a little bit about the school that he's trying to get. And he, when he's describing the school and everything and what he wants taught there, uh, he's still on the same European German system, kindergarten through 12, he's still on that same basis. You know, as a European, as a matter of fact, the word kindergarten is German. And that's where the school uh, system that I taught here to our children comes from. And uh, he's talking about doing the same thing. You know, uh, an another thing about this video is he's very critical of the Mexicans, uh, uh, especially during the times that uh, our people were struggling, you know, doing civil rights, Jim Crow, all that. He's you know, he's asking where the Mex where were the Mexicans during this period, but he never mentioned where were the Africans at during this period. That, that's what I, mm. that's my question. I mean, this is what he's projecting out that we saw African, but where were the Africans during Jim Crow? Where were the Africans during the Civil Rights Movement? Where were they? Where are they at now? You mean and during? This is what he, you mean during? This you, do, you mean during this Ferguson? Me doing this Ferguson thing? Hey, perfect example. Where are they? They're, they're, they're never around. Where were they during Hurricane Katrina? Right. 
that that's what I'm saying. You know, you he's giving all this credence and and all this credit to them and being critical of Mexicans, and he was also critical of homosexuals. Uh, what what where's that country at? I, I never heard of a country called homosexuals. These are the people that he were asking. Where were they at when our people were suffering? I mean, come on. That's but that's about is one of the dumbest things I ever heard that could have been saying. And this guy's supposed to be a scholar. I think it's the way I think it's the way he says it. You know, it's like that pre that preacher how a preacher talks. You know, it's how a preacher talks. He, you know, that's that's what I mean about soul people. It's the way you talk. You know, you, you, I'll give you an example. You know when Europeans say, can you mute your phone in the back, please? You know how uh, when you listen to Europeans talk, they always say amazing, wonderful, wow. You know what, how they say, that's incredible. You, know, you, you yeah. ever notice they say words? Those words really don't mean shit. But they're to make you, it's kind of like to make you get interested in the lie that they're telling you. You know what I'm saying? That's amazing. Well, normally when brothers and sisters talk, they, they they make you feel like that with the words they're saying. If you listen to some of the people talking on this uh on this Ferguson thing, the words that they're saying, their words are moving you. They're stirring your they're stirring your soul. So he has that ability to do that. But all the words behind what he says is is garbage. And this, Great and this, and, this, and 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 you're right. This is one of the main things that confuses us. Right, and 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 then this guy he goes on to mention in this video that people aren't supposed to be slaves, but as you heard last night on the this insert that we played from Blacks Cannot Be American. The only thing he called us were slaves. He called us Africans and slaves. And we went over the definition of what an African is last night. So that's all he called us was slaves. But then he goes on to really contradict himself and said that people ain't supposed to be slaves. But he says we are. I I mean, I don't get it, Buck. I mean, it's just, it, it, he goes on. Well, let's go. Well, let, well, Rick, let's go to the phone, phone line and see if any of the callers, maybe any some of the callers may be Umar Johnson fans. They may like Umar Johnson. Any of the callers have anything they'd like to add to the conversation? Oh, Nisi, you're with us now. Nisi, what's going on? Hey, Rick. Hey, uh, how y'all doing? Hey, uh, hey, Nisi. It's been, like, it's been one of those days. One of them days, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, hopefully one of them nights will be better. This will be one of them nights. <laughs> uh, anybody else, any caller have anything they want to add? 706? Okay, Rick, go ahead, man. Uh, okay, and um, he, he also is a critical of... Uh, you know, of uh, if we continue to let this so-called white supremacy, even though everything that he talked about, basically he got from these same people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rick, you know, <laughs> Rick, yeah, how, co- how yeah, come, yeah. dude? How come people can't see this, man? I, I don't know, man. I, I really don't know. I mean, it's. It's really, it's real easy. I, I guess, you know, people want to, as long as they hear something sounding good, they don't they don't look into it, research it, you know, dig into it to see, you know, what it's, they just heard something good. And I'm, and I'm going to tell you folks out there, guys like Umar Johnson, in order for their lives to work for you, they have to tell a lot of truth, too. If they just coming out and telling all lies, you're not going to believe them. But the stuff that they preach, they bring a lot of truth into it. 
to fool you. And I'm sorry, you cannot believe without a lie. Spell the word. You cannot believe without a lie. That's cold, man. <laughs> okay, so you were saying and and as and as and as Bobby Wright said, anytime you let another people define you, you're a slave to them. And I, I believe that a whole lot. And but to anyway to go on, uh, of course he you know by his name Umar Abdullah Johnson he said he was raised as a uh, Muslim, uh, but he goes on uh, he talked about Christianity says that Christianity is okay it just depends on how you use it. Uh, what does that mean? How is Christianity supposed to be used and it be right? I mean, he, he, he like I said earlier also, he gives credit to the wrong type of people. He was talking about uh, Malcolm X's grandson, uh, Malcolm. And he was talking about him getting together and helping out, you know, Malcolm with his struggle because uh, I guess he was trying to lead the same type of movement like his uh, grandfather. Anyway, he was killed. And Brother Umar was talking about some of the people that he was, that Malcolm was working with, you know, including himself. And he brought up the name Cynthia McKinney. And I'm saying, wow. Isn't that the lady that was uh, in the House in Georgia, House of Representatives, the one that got into it with the policeman up there in D.C. and lost her uh, bid to, uh, as a matter of fact, she also ran for the Green Party during the last presidential election. And, And I'm like, where are these, what, what African organizations are here? You were mentioning all these people, but all these people are here. What, who in Africa is, is helping out with the organization? Right. What kind of support are you getting from there? I, you know, and I, I just don't get this guy. You know, I, I was talking, all, you know, before you go on, Rick, I was talking to a guy the other day, and he said something, man, that just, just blew it off. The, the, I mean, blew it off the handle. It's kind of like you just said. Where are all these Africans? It's you know, you, the Africans aren't even African like us. You know what I'm saying? Africans right. don't pop it like that. It's it's kind of like it's it's a program, man. Rick, it's a program because Africans yeah. don't even say. You know, they look at the, they look at it like it's a cartoon. I'm sorry, brother. Go ahead. I just had to make that point. Uh, no, no, no problem. Uh, you know, he, he and I, another thing I found kind of surprising, he was talking about uh, Malcolm X and uh, Martin Luther King. And he was saying that most of the stuff that these guys were portraying was pr- propaganda. And he says no leaders reveal their whole hand. So my question is, since none of these leaders uh, ever show their whole hand, what are you hiding that you ain't revealing to us? Since since leaders don't play their whole hand. And then also, what you what he's saying to me is propaganda. So I guess, you know, he just speaking for himself on that. Um, he said that's how wars go. Oh, go ahead. Hello? Yes. Um, um, since, since, since this guy, Johnson, he's not here to defend himself, um, I, I, I'd like to um, pose a few questions um, in his defense, if you will. Go ahead. Um, you mentioned that this this guy was a uh, uh, a he has a doctorate and he's a doctor and he's a child psychologist. 
Okay. You went on to talk about, and in, in some previous shows, we talked about menticide and how we, you know, we don't look, we as a community do not look at healing of the mind. Well, he said he's a child psychologist in the school system in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So um, would, wouldn't that count for something? Wouldn't he be trying to help? I mean, isn't he trying to help our youth by by working with the parents? You know, if these people have to take their, send their children to these institutions because they don't know any other way to educate their children, I mean, isn't he doing a service by by understanding the so-called African-American youth and assisting in, in their development and proper placement inside this, in, inside the school system? Isn't he contributing in some type of way? Well, uh, if you ask me, I, I say no, because, because that's not, that's not how we are supposed to be. Uh, we are, we, why is he teaching us to be African? And this is what he's, you know, teaching. He's teaching us to be African when we're not. Well, most of us not anyway. I can't say everybody. There's probably some people out there that probably are African. But most, but my people aren't. So if he's teaching anything other than indigenous stuff, I don't care what kind of psychiatrist or whatever psychologist he is. If he, he if he's dropping, if he's not teaching our children the way that they're supposed to be taught. I don't care what he said. And that's just my personal opinion. Ma'am, and also if I can add on to that, and this is and, and this is what you're seeing happening with it. This is why you see us repeat ourselves. When you teach us that we're something that we're when you teach us that we're something that we're not, what do we do? We just kill ourselves out. Because we're not even put, we're not even playing the, we're not even playing the role that we were put here to play. We playing in somebody else's game, and we always the pawns in the game. So that's why. And as far as that school system goes, for real, for real, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves. We still playing that game, but we always got this excuse of how come we haven't came up with a a, a school system that a checkmate what we got now. We the black man. You can't you can't come up with something better than that for our children. We still on that. So no, I don't think he. I, I you know just because he has a doctorate and we always say that we got we got millions of doctors. But but isn't he also preparing or working towards opening up a facility or a school system um, for young uh, African American youths? We're not African Americans. Most of the youth that are going to be part of that program are not actually African American. As a matter of fact, there's no such thing as African American. What I mean, and we said this a million times too. In order, if you're going to call yourself something, it has to be connected to something. What does African America connect to? Does it connect to a landmass? No. Does it connect to a language? No. Does it connect connect to a culture? No. So what is it? Anybody? <laughs> hey, I, I would like to chime in, sibling, if y'all don't mind. Oh, uh, m- please. Peace and prosperity. I, I, I would say that both of you have done an excellent job at exposing Umar to a point that I had no idea how in-depth this shit goes on the psychological level. This nigga that went to school for psychology. So if you check everything he's done, he actually said in the video that y'all played yesterday, I heard the nigga say that we were not Americans. Af- he said the, 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 the so-called African-American has no American roots. And for you to say that, for you to say that to, let's say you got young, influential uh, uh, African-American children under the age of 25, listen to you, you are a fucking esoterist. You are taking the esoteric knowledge, which is the knowledge of where we come from, just like Brother Buck just said. And you're corrupting it and co- co- you're corrupting it and diluting it to a certain degree that we will never be free. 
And, and this is what gets me that you said earlier, Rick, that w- when you played this thing about Umar, the nigga said that his purpose, his purpose is to get African-American young boys to go back to Africa and take, he's, his whole idea of scholarship is to teach our young brothers who are lost and confused. We, we know how fucked up we are about who we are. So you want to go teach our youth to go back to a place they never come from? And then you send all of our wealth. So some of the brothers that, so some of the few brothers that do make it out of this motherfucking hellhole because we all fucked up right now, you want to send them to Africa. That's what his, that is what his intentions is. And, and let me top this off and then I'm, then I'm going to be quiet. What really bothers me about Umar is a while back, this nigga had sister after sister trying to marry his motherfucking ass. Begging him to, everybody going Umar just like they was going crazy for the, for that sissy that make all of the movies. What's his name? Uh, Ty, uh, uh, Tyler Perry. Yes. Tyler Perry knew he mm. was gay. Tyler Perry knew his motherfucking ass was gay and all of these sisters going ape shit trying to marry him and trying to be the man, trying to be the woman that captures this nigga. Umar said, I do not foresee myself getting married in the future. This is what he told all them sisters that was trying to marry his bitch ass. Then he turned around and he's raising millions of dollars to open a school for little boys. Now, as, what? What? So after that, now after you, you want to open the school for little boys. What do you want to do with these little boys? Uh, you, you, to me, you don't want to just send them to Africa. You want to molest them psychologically and physically because I can't trust no nigga that turned down beautiful black women, beautiful African American sisters <laughs> was begging this nigga to get married, and he fucking turned them down. <laughs> That shit ain't hey, no hey, the show. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it don't make no sense to me. And then, last, last but not least, we 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 top it off with with, with the coup de grace of of of, of Umar. Uh-oh. He's a psychiatrist. Listen to what this nigga does. You take a picture with a white woman in an engage in an engaging picture. If you look at the way she had her legs. If you look at the way they were connected, it was saying something in that picture, siblings, as if though they were a couple. And see, that's why I'm more angry at that nigga than anything, because you had beautiful sisters uh, 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 trying to get with your motherfucking ass, and you hurt them sisters. You hurt them sisters. And then you turn around and take a picture with this bitch. You know if you're a psychiatrist what psychological effect you're doing to our people. Yet there's no pictures of you hugged up on no sister like you want to fuck her. I just wanted to say that. Thank thank you. Man, I I say keep doing what y'all doing. It's excellent. Thank you, brother. Thank you for sharing with us. Thank you, Uh, man. uh, What about soul people? You see how the brother sibling was talking. You see how the fire that was coming out of them. That's the spirit that's in us. So that's why a lot of Europeans be like, wow, and incredible, because they're trying to get that type of electricity running through you. Rick? (laughs) Oh, man. uh, (laughs) But he was right, though. He hit it. He hit it. He He hit it. He 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 was absolutely right. Absolutely right. right. And, uh, uh, I did have a couple more little things here. Let me. I got so many notes and stuff. Oh man, you was taking notes. It. You was taking notes big time on this, huh? Yeah, I, I, I was trying to do it right, man. Trying to do it right well, we to ensure you. that. Uh, well, we appreciate you. Know, you that I, well, go ahead. Okay, and, yeah. go, you got them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is what I want to talk about. There's another video. It's called, uh, that he made, it's called uh, Kill the Nigger So the African Can Be Born. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow, wow. <laughs> Kill the nigger so the African can be born. Now, ain't nigger and African the same word? <laughs> Exactly. I mean, that, 
that's what I'm saying. Appearances, man. You don't even have to. I mean, before they start talking, you could just look at what they look at the words. Like I said, like I was talking about yesterday. Look at how this guy dresses, you know. And you, there's just a lot of things you can pick up without even have to have him saying a word. But anyway, he made the suggestion that our people should get into the stock market. Now, my question is, who stock market? <laughs> is he talking about Wall Street? No, no. He's he talking, talking about Black Wall Street, brother. <laughs> <laughs> is he talking about the African stock market? <laughs> because he ain't talking about the American stock market <laughs> because there's no such thing. <laughs> so, you so, know, so my question is, what 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 is he talking about? I mean, well, what who, well, what stock market did he say? He didn't. He just said we need to get into the stock market. The only stock market I know is Wall Street. That 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 I would think that he would be familiar with anyway. And and, and he and, said we should challenge white folks and uh and and take their businesses away. Well, I agree with that. Well. We yeah, I, I agree with that to a certain point, but but what I'm saying is let's make our let's make our businesses and forget competing with them. Let's make a better product, and we don't have to compete with them. People will come to us anyway well, if we're making a better product. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so we don't have to challenge anybody. So what would you say? <laughs> what would you say that we could produce right now as a group of people? What could we produce right now? That could be feasible. Say, like if you if you had, if you could do this with ten people, what would you produce right now? That, with ten people. Yes. Oh, with ten people and five and, and five acres. Ten people and five acres. Uh, we definitely could. We definitely could create. Uh, start growing our own food. Uh, we could also probably create a nice uh, uh, if we have to make a, a, a man-made lake or something and raise fish uh, uh, organically, naturally, the way uh, our elders did. And you know, I think for that for a start, that's something that we could do that might not take too much time to do. And uh, well, of course, if, I'm sure most people. Already, especially people listening to the show, probably already have gardens anyway. But we, uh, but with ten people, we might can produce a, a mass amount of that. And five acres, we could create a better uh, product. And also, uh, we don't, we shouldn't. If you had something like five acres, uh, and I think you mentioned this on the earlier show, that instead of trying to grow a little bit of everything, let's grow certain things and then try to get in with other people who are doing, growing other stuff, and then and we can barter that way. That's one thing that we could do immediately and start, uh, you know, and then uh, a lot of the stuff like like, we, like you're doing right now, you know, uh, in, uh, selling a lot of information. I mean, not selling, but get, get, dishing out information, you know, uh, to that, you know, get out to the people. And we could get ideas from that. You know, we could start uh, going out in the community. We could sell books, write books, sell books, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, but and people don't is... read. Yeah, that's but true. Pe- but people don't read. I think something that's simple, something that people can do is like that hempcrete, but manufacture it. Grow the hemp and the sand, you know, and the lime and make a kind of hempcrete that would replace concrete. But you got to grow hemp. Got to be able to grow hemp in massive, and it's easy to. And that's one of the things that grow wild, especially if it's grown outdoors. So stuff like that, I think the the fish is a good idea. Hemp creed, uh, sugar cane, stuff like that, where you can grow and you can at least sell in the community that you're in. You know, to start off with. But one of the things that the African American doesn't do is produce. As a group of people, like you say, you can you can create DVDs and CDs and stuff, but you know, 
people not the the way people's lives is is so fast they don't have time because most of their time go to boss. So we're not in we're we're not in the we're not in the habit of doing for the group because we that we've been trained to work for boss, and unfortunately that's where the majority of our energy goes. And if you say you know we should start building for our survival in the future. You get looked at cross-eyed, which brings up Nisi's "Black is the new white." We 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 act like we're not supposed to be here. Many African Americans act like they're not supposed to be here because they've been trained not to be here. Right, and 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 what's bad about it? Everybody else can connect themselves to something, except the so-called African American. I mean, he can't connect himself to anything, and. Even though he believes what foreigners tell him and what others tell him, he still can't. He still has no connection to it. Yes, he'll believe it, but he still does not connect. Because if they were connecting to it, we would be trying to get over Africa in droves right now. Yes. If we had any kind of connection to it. Yes, and that so, was another thing that that. Umar Johnson said we need to connect connect with our ancestors in Africa. Well, we uh, I, my question to him is uh, when uh, when you gonna connect with yours? Because we I've never heard him talk about his genealogy past Frederick Douglass, and I don't think he was at, uh, over in Africa. So you know, let's let's talk about your genealogy. Can you trace your ancestry back to Africa? If you can, will you please tell us? You know, he's talking about some root doctor. He's talking about he was Igbo from Nigeria. You mean a, a root doctor can tell you, a DNA test can tell you, and your own people who know you and raise you, who brought you into this world, can't tell you nothing? I mean, come on. Yeah. What's up? Well, the people love him, man. And the people love him. You know, uh, I've been getting some uh, some bad press over what you said last night, but it was just easily dismissive, and that's what I mean about how we're just easily led astray. You can tell us anything, and if it sounds like a pastor in the pulpit, we swallow it. So, what else you got on uh, Dr. Johnson, Rick? Right. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this thing out a little bit because uh, that's about all I have, you know, on them. But I did want to uh, reiterate, reiterate that, and I mentioned it last night, too, that this guy said that pan-Africanism is the only system that's worked over the past 200 years, and I want to pose that question one more time. What has being African benefited you? How has it benefited you? And with that, Umar Johnson has been bleached out. And I'll put, and that's all I'm going to say about that. And if you got any, if anybody have any questions, anything, you can bring them up right now. I have a question. Yes. Yes, I'm from Arizona. I have a question. I listen to Omar Johnson, but what I don't understand about a lot of these Afrocentrics is what African country are they talking about? I mean, who and what? I mean, you know, I've never understood that part of it. When somebody can explain to me, we'll all know. What African country are you referring to? So, man, I've you, never heard an African country tr- reaching out to a so-called black Americans. So who who are they talking about when they say that's our motherland, you know? Ma'am, when you ask that question, what what kind of response do you get? Oh, well, you know. <laughs> 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 I mean, most of these people get in a fight mode or uh, argument, very argumentative. Um, Why do you think you that know, is? Especially most of us who are not even trying to be halfway 
uh, conscious. But um, I'm not getting anywhere with that question. I, I get a lot of anger. Why do you think um, that is? Why, ma'am, why do you think that uh, is? That's uh, pretty much what I get, but I'm just getting really sick and tired of uh, uh, hearing uh, that's supposed to be the motherland. Well, what in the hell have the motherland done for me lately or any of us? Right. You know, who are these people? I don't even know what, you know, it's just <laughs> mind-boggling that we can be so stupid. Uh, wrapped up in that much stupidity. So, I, I and and by the way, I love this program. I came across it on the internet, you know, just searching, and and I plan on supporting you guys a little bit. Um, but I just, I don't get it. Did, is, explain, somebody help me. <laughs> help me out here, Rick. You want to get it? Uh, all I can say is. You know, most of these people out here that that this guy is dragging in, uh, their parents. What what are their parents telling them? I mean, you know, most of the people uh, that uh, in my family, as my family told me, when they told me about myself, they told me about all of this native stuff. You know, uh, okay, how my grandmother and great grandmother and stuff were Indians and and like that, and I'm thinking to myself, well, what about Africa? Uh, what do you know about Africa? And all they did was just look stupid. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and this is another thing that people don't see. When you can't, when someone can't, and especially your own people, because your own people, ain't, they're not going to sit there and just tell you a lie. They're not going to do that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. If they are mixed up on a question like, Okay, what can you tell us about Africa? And they give you the hour, hour, hours. Then maybe it's because they ain't from Africa. How can I tell you something about Africa if I don't know anything about it and I don't connect to it? I can't tell you, and we don't look at that. Sometimes the best answers are the ones that are silent sometimes. Exactly. Sometimes silence is the best answer, and we have to get that, you know, and we don't we don't look out for stuff like that. That's why... When uh when we did this this particular Boule Beach, I, I made a sure that I mentioned that everybody you gotta read his words, listen to what he's saying, and put it together that way instead of just listening to it and mm-hmm. not you know just because the guy looks nice, dresses nice, or talks about mm-hmm. something you know that sounds good to you. Like I said, you even to, to hide a lie, there has to be truth in it. Because you're not gonna, you're not gonna get away. You can't just go out and just tell a, a lie to, to just about anybody, and not, and they're not gonna believe it. So you gotta put truth in it to, to win them over, and then you can make them oh, believe sure. the board, the board die. But when, as I said, when they explain to me what African country they are referring to, if they say uh, Nigerian, I can understand where you're coming. If they say Gambia or Tell me, what, who are you? Uh, you know, even Africans don't deal with each other a lot of times over there. So, right. I mean, well, who, what and who are you talking about? It's just part of the propaganda. It's just sad. I, I'm, I'm so sad about it, you know? It's, it's uh, just most the, the best answer I ever got was West Africa. I, I ain't never heard no country. All I heard was West Africa. So in other words, they only claim West Africa. They don't claim, you know, and that's another thing. Africa, who, you, you, if you claim West Africa, who and what? We can get back to that. You're not who, who are they talking about? Most of the time when I ask questions, you know, when, when I was younger, I used to, it, it always confused me, and so I never embraced it. They would go exactly. back and forth. Look, they would go back and forth between Africa Egypt, Kemet, and just back and forth, riding, riding, riding. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You know, so who in the world are you? I mean, my God, just say Egypt. Just they, say uh, whatever. Who Who are you talking about? Those are countries and uh, over know, there. Man. And they, tribes that don't e- seem to accept each other. I, I, don't, I don't get it. You know, maybe I'm just... 
maybe it's just me. I just don't get it. I've never gotten it. You're not too old to get it. <laughs> but listening to your program, I'm really learning a lot, you know. Well, thank you. I'm learning a whole in. lot. Thank you for turn it, tuning in. And you know, I'm I'm almost 60 years old this <laughs> December. So <laughs> you can't teach. They say you can't teach old people new tricks. I tell you what, I'm learning a lot from you guys. Well, thank you very, very much. Very proud of you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Um, yeah. May I? Um, with, with everything that's going on in this country and the way that we're being treated here um, as uh, what you guys said, Americans, um, it, it almost it almost feels as if we're not wanted here. And I'm not I'm not saying that we should go back to a country that uh, we are not a part of. But would it be easier for or would it? Would it be best for us to try and help ourselves in an area that we're, we probably would be able to be surrounded more by people that kind of look like us and, and work with them versus try, trying to get this country to accept, or I shouldn't say accept, but to try to get this country to um, treat us in a, in a different light? Here, here, First of all, Oh, you go ahead, Bob. Um, that's the purpose of what we're talking about tonight. That's why we have to be separated and confused about each other. We, we, I have to hate you because you wear Nikes and I wear Adidas. I have to hate you because you wear blue and I wear green. I have to hate you because you're a female. I have to hate you because you wear a baseball cap. All these divisions... That's why they that's why they're put in place. So we won't do that. The earth doesn't recognize us as an individual. It recognizes us as a group. That's why we're out of our time element. That's why we can't net that. That's the whole purpose of us to get us out of our time with the planet. We connected to this planet like everything else. The rivers that flow, they flow on the, the, the they flow on the earth's time. We're supposed to flow on that time too, but since we're in other people's, we we take our definitions from other people and our cue from other people. That's why it's hard for us to do that. I mean, we should be doing it. We are dropping like flies, not just from shooting each other, but from our health practices. We think we can eat and do anything we want to do, and we can't. Look, look at our children. I'm down here in the south and. 75% of the kids I see they not 10 yet they got that silver stuff in their mouth because their teeth are riding out from too much sugar we haven't figured these things out yet so you know I, 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 ma'am what you're saying is absolutely right we should be working around each other especially here in the southeast it ain't no excuse all this land down here but I'm finding out that we're scared of the land Rick, you had something you uh, you had an uh, answer? Uh, no, I was just going to say, and and that's the thing about these guys like Umar Johnson and all these other all these other people. Uh, they're, they're, the purpose of them is to get you off of your homeland. They want us off of this is our homeland. They want us gone because if we're gone, then they can take it over. You know, they don't they don't call America the land of milk and honey for nothing. And that's their whole purpose, like I said, to get you away from your own land and send you somewhere where you're gonna be a slave. Because believe me, those people over there in so called Africa know exactly who you are too, just like everybody else. That's why when they come over here, they treat you like doo doo too, just like everybody else does. But you call that your and, mama and daddy, right? Right. None of them live in your community. They talk to you like dirt. Wait. Any, hey. You, you, yeah. you remember the video with the, with the uh, Nigerian lady? She 
they were kind of taunting her and mocking her, and she called them trash repeatedly. You're trash. That's what my mother told me, that you're trash. Do you remember she said that? No, I remember right. what she said. She said, I, your I mama. That. She said, your mama is trash. She talked about right. your mama. She said her, and she said her mama told her that, too. Yeah. Yeah, right. you're, 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 your mom is trash. You're trash. So that's what she was saying repeatedly. I, personally, I've never, ever met a an, an African who was, you know, open to so-called, I don't, I don't use the word African American, so I'm just going to say so-called black people over here. They, they, they don't, they don't embrace you. They don't, they. I've never met any that, that, that do, and they look down on you. I have never met one yet that did not through college and through now. I've never met one that didn't. And they're just Nor arrogant. And they're just arrogant as as the Europeans. You know, they're they're saying, well. Since y'all don't want to be no part of it, we don't need y'all. You know, then say we hating on us. You know, I, I mean, you know, like like Buck was saying earlier, these this, this show, the videos that that you see us on, those are for our people. If you don't want to listen to us, go to another video, but don't come on our videos hating on us because we're not on your videos hating on you. Because we can care less about your videos because we know who we are. <laughs> so we don't have to argue with you about yours because we know what's going on. But they would love to come on ours and say that we full of hate. When I am, I haven't heard Nisi say anything about hating Africans. I've never heard Buck say anything about hating Africans. And I definitely haven't said ever said anything about hating Africans. You know, but we full of hate. Well, that's how they get you out of your time code. They always got to make you the victim, and we accept, and you, we gladly accept it. That's what that's what I mean, man. That's why we gonna have to unite, man. That's the only way we gonna have to get with this earth, the ones who are a part of it, because many of us we're just not. We're just not. We've been we've been cut off from it. Sorry. Well, that's just like Umar like, Johnson. Guys like Umar Johnson says that the earth is a test for us. A test? A test. Yeah. Well, um, well, well, we're glad you we hope you liked tonight's episode of Boulet Bleach Out with Dr. Umar Johnson. Now we're gonna talk about something else, this Ferguson thing. And here to lead that is Nisi. Nisi, take it away. Man, I am telling you, this this Ferguson thing, I I, I I haven't seen anything like it probably since around the the, the late the late sixties or early seventies and I was too little to really remember all of that. What I, what what I see is that there are a lot of Fergusons all across America. I just recently found out that Ferguson was a fun downtown. I found that out last night, and I said, okay, that explains a lot. It was a sundown town. My question was, how did it How did it flip from a sundown town to being about, I don't know, they go between 65 and 70 percent of so-called African Americans. But how did, how did it get, get to that? You know, who were the people who wanted to migrate or to move into and assimilate in a fun downtown. I, now, I, I could not really figure that out, but that's, 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 that, that gave me a headache. Well, th- that's, that's why, the, that's why this is why it's important that we teach who we are. How do you know that the people who were there weren't ap- approached upon, encroached upon? Who was the white folks that was there should be the question. Who are they? Right. Who are who are they? And and this is the point. And this is why they have to teach us that we're not part of part of anything, because we'll just shuffle around here like we're renters. We don't really care. Oh well, I just moved somewhere else. We don't really think it's ours, because other people come in and tell us that it's not, and then they'll tell us that, and then we'll send our kids so they can tell our kids the same thing, and we'll do it like Rick said, with our chest puffed out. We'll do it arrogantly. 
the people were already there. The people were already there. Just like everywhere else around here. That's why they move people around. That's why they'll build a dam or a railroad station through where people live to move the people out. Or just come through uh, killing. Or pay the men to get the women out of there. They do all kind of stuff. Los Angeles is a perfect example. Brothers went through there killing with that crack and stuff in the uh, 80s and 90s. Look at the L.A. now with black people, with African-American people. They scattered all over the place. The immigrants from the south have came in and filled up the city and have the Negroes in L.A. turn inside out. How come those same people in L.A., which most of them are from the South, go back home and develop those lands that they have and start creating products that they can be used to help get rid of some of this diabetes and heart disease? Why won't we do that? Because we have been dumbed. Yeah, so, you know. I was was, was just going to say, Eastern, you asked a question about uh, people are begging for solutions. When you give them things that they can do, every time there's an excuse, excuse to not do any of it. For instance, you, you have people who say, well, we should boycott. Okay, come up with some things that you want to boycott. Well, you know, well, we're not going to do that. If you're not going to do anything that you sit down and come up with in terms of a list of, of, of grievances that you want to ascribe to, well, what is it about? They're, they're clones. They're and, you, clones. and you just go round. You go round and round in a circle. They take your mental side, and this is this is our illness. You know, we didn't do it to ourselves, but we do have it. They take your mental side and flip it and turn it into capitalism. Because as soon as they, uh, that's happening where I live. I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. It's happening on Bill Street. They decided that after they started monitoring our mental side, our internal mental side that we have down there every weekend. It's a shooting. It's a this and a that. So now the shop owners, not the politicians, not the city council, the shop owners have decided that after 12 a.m. midnight on the weekend, you're going to pay $10 to be down there or you have to leave. Now, can you believe that? Wow. <laughs> I said, I said shop owners, not politicians. Wow. And we well, already everybody. know, you know the history of Bill Street is us, uh, mm-hmm. period. Period. That, that's who Bill Street is, but not anymore. And you got to pay $10, get... to, you got to pay $10 to come down. After 12 a.m. midnight, it's $10. And this is a mm-hmm. public stretch of, of intertwined streets. You know, Bill Street is the main street of the corridor of all the connecting streets, but it's the area. This is taxpayer public uh, public street. So now we have store oh. owner rights, and we still ain't came up with no uh, American rights. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best thing to do, if we could just, uh, I mean, just, I'm, well, here's an example boycott I think that Montgomery bus boycott spoke to us we should just pick a company and just watch it go down from if we would withdraw our support from it nationwide boycott of let's say McDonald's and just watch it just shrivel up and die that's the kind of stuff that's going to show how much power we have because they call they calling us the minority. I don't think we're the minorities. I think we're the no. majority. Or I think we're the majority around here. But since they tell us we're the minority, we believe it. Nisi. Well, you know, well, you know what? When it when it comes to words, we we would do well to each one teach one. The word minority within that word has minor. So you're a child. That's I mean that's how the word came about. You are a minor, you are, you're a child, minority. Said who? Who, who said, well, how did you get to be a minority? Boycott the holiday season. Right. <laughs> yeah. That'll be huge. 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 So, 
So I think those are the kind of things, I mean, a whole bunch of stuff, because we gonna have to do something different than what we're doing, y'all, because we're repeating ourselves. All this is is L.A. Rodney King over again, and like the, she said earlier, the Watts riots and all that. Mm-hmm. So what and, do you so like what do you suggest, Nisa? I su- I suggest that we're that we're gonna have to figure it figure it out. We're sitting up there each time I talk to people, they say one thing, but they really mean something else. At the end of the day, what I have to do is that we're still waiting or a master to tell us what to do. People may get mad and slip out and, and, and almost have a stroke at hearing that, but that's what I that's what I get. If you don't have control over your own life, what do you have control over? You you have control over nothing because you're a slave. You do what right. I tell you to you do what I tell you to do and like it. And to be honest, I think many of us we're comfortable in that position. So, anything else, Nisi? No, I'm watching this thing play out, and and the other part of it is, why do you get all this coverage? It seems like it's still with Asian provocateurs. It's it's all kind of stuff, and I'm trying to figure out what is it about. It's about more than, you know, this young man's death. Now it has morphed into something else. It's about a lot of things. But you just believe that that it's the beginning of, some, some things that are getting ready to be ratcheted up. That's one thing that you can believe. You ever notice that everything is about us? Everything exactly. is always about us. It's never about nobody else. One of the things about us, especially being on this land mass, we put out an energy that these people can gather up and use for whatever they use it for. It's almost tangible. It's almost like being in the South on a on a on a hot humid day you it's hot you can you can feel the air we put out an energy even if we don't say nothing we let off this light in our body this explosion goes off and these people take that and they eat it they use it for all kind of things we just we just put it out we just excuse me i said correct Yes, so we just put it out. We don't even, I mean, we use it on each other, of course, but this is what's happening. And it's its way past time, y'all, to, we, we got to start using it for ourselves, you know, if we're going to sustain ourselves here. That's right. And, and, and another thing about that, Keith, and, and this is exactly what other people do. They wait until you come up with something. They don't, they don't, they never create anything. They wait for you to come up with something. And the example that I like to use is the, like the rap industry. Now, as, as far as the history of rap goes, it's supposed to go back to New York City and the, and the hood, the brothers, you know, out there rapping and stuff. Look at, look at it today. Who's running the rap industry now? It's a billion dollar industry and who's running it? And that, and 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 you can even go as far as now who's at the top of the charts now in rap. I mean, I, I was looking at a, a, a thing the other day where they were talking about the greatest rapper ever. Eminem was number one. <laughs> <laughs> but if you if they write the if they write the history, they can write whatever they want to write. Right. That's right, and that and, and but and we just go right along with it. We just no. go right along with it. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, are there any I final? Have... Yes, yes, ma'am. Why is it that the only time death, the death of young American males, is when it, they are killed by someone other than? another American male. As long as we are attacking each other and killing up each other, don't nobody say shit. There's no media press. There's no so-called uh, black leaders out there. Why Why is it an issue only when they that when someone gets killed by, by a white person? Why is I that? Asked that? I asked that question last night. I was in a group discussion 
and I was, I, I kid you not, I was literally, you know, not physically, but literally fighting about six people when I asked that same question. And I asked the question, uh, you know, to the extent, if we say that this person becomes the judge, jury, and executioner, and we're upset about that, and he's supposed to protect and serve, put that part to the side, is it not the same thing when our brothers, particularly our brothers, but, you know, one of our own becomes judge, jury, and executioner in the same fashion? They have a beef. I'm going to quash it. He did this or that. He stepped on my shoe. Stuff like that. Boom. You blow the brains up. So, so this person became judge, jury, and executioner, too. And I asked the other, I, you know, I had a, a lengthy paragraph, but they, you know, they, they couldn't really do anything except get mad and try to ridicule it, and I ran them away. But I had about six people attacking me because I, I asked that question. And I asked, why is that? Why, and, and they came up with all kind of excuses, you know, all kind of excuses that it's racism, it's not the same thing. Really? How is it not the same thing in terms of, of killing and, and, and one person being judge, jury, and executioner um, of another person having their life well in their hands? I don't see that much difference in that. And the sick part about that, too, I, I agree with you, Nancy, and the sick part about it as well is that when there is an investigation that's going on, oh, the community wants to protect Pookie and them, seriously, yeah, I said it, um, by not snitching. Oh, we ain't snitching. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes, that, that's a major problem. I mean, you to, to see a mother's face, to be around a, a woman who has lost their child, and they know the killer's out there, they, they have a spirit about them that is, is, is cold-blooded, y'all. It is. It's, you know it's a cold. It's a cold piece they have on them. But I saw this woman, and it was within this year, so it hadn't been that long ago. A few months back, she buried her last child. Let me say this: they weren't all boys. There were, I think, two girls and two boys. She had four. I cried for days because that woman's face was. I, I saw it every time I broke my eyes. She was in Chicago. She lost her last child. They have been staggered over the years, but she lost her last child, and she said, I have no more children. That woman should have been the poster child. We should be having interviews with her. We should be inundated with seeing her and other mothers out there like her because she's not the only one who's lost all of their children, all of their children. So what does that mean when we take the lives of our children? Is this retribution for us going over to these wars? Because that's something that we got to think about. When we send our kids over to these wars, what is the karma that's going to get kicked back at us for that? Do we ever think about that as a community? No. No, we don't think about it. We get happy. This is one of the things, this is this is a kind of a Umar Johnson type thing. We do things and we give it we give it life. We give it breath. We make it grow and then stand up arrogantly and pat ourselves on the back like we did something. So what's up with that? See all this stuff that we say we think we doing good, because boss say it's okay. Is that how it's supposed to be? Are we speeding up our time with destiny? Are we doing it ourselves? Are we doing it in place of them so they don't have to reap the karma death of that? Do they make us do it? Because you must say that we've been in the Korean War. What do the Koreans do in our community? We've been in the, we've been in the Vietnam War. How the Vietnamese sparing off of us? We've been in the Iraqi war, that desert storm. How they, how that's going in our communities. We don't look at that and question that. No, we pour an ice water over our head. <laughs> that's where another we are. Example, yeah, and another example would be uh, when, when uh, 
everybody's favorite black president, Bill Clinton, was in office when he bombed the Sudan. <laughs> and then you, and now you see all these lost boys over here from the Sudan. Uh, yes. Benefit. Yes. <laughs> and none of us are. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to close it down. Rick or Nisi, you guys want to close with something before we get the uh, last word in? Well, uh, I, I just want to say I hope everybody enjoyed the show tonight. And uh, and I want to uh, thank Buck because uh, when I created this boule bleach out thing, it, it, I kind of created it as like a joke or something. I mean, not really a joke, but, you know, it's something, you know, just to – add a little spice to the program but but you were really uh and i thank you for that you starting to make me see the importance of doing it so uh be ready the next one because we ain't no telling who i'm gonna get but we're gonna get somebody and all you guys know who you are if like we said the meaning of boule is anyone that's going against the our uh, ability to govern ourselves and to do for ourselves and to be able to create our create our own world here in our own homeland anything that teaches against that is boule to us and with that i just want to say good night to everybody and we'll see you next tuesday rick before you go did you see that piece of jesse jackson down in ferguson no, I'm not in this step. Ooh-wee. Jesse's finished, brother. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'll give it to you, Rick. I saw it. It, it, it was it, it's totally awesome. <laughs> hey, but check out the look on Jesse Jackson's face. It's that old coon he could, look. <laughs> he couldn't say anything. Hey. He could he could have you ever known Jesse Jackson to be speechless? He and never he was, got a word in his mm. life. Never. And the driver of the car, you know, going to try to, we will not be having that. They ripped his ass up before he even finished his sentence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, this is the dawn of the age of Aquarius, man. Like the song say, the, the liberation of the mind. Yes, and sir. ain't going for this bull jive no more. <laughs> That's right. All right, Rick. Well, hey, man, I'm going to be out for two weeks. I'm going to be out for a week next week, man. I'm going to be in uh, down in the forest of Mississippi. So uh, uh, I'm going to do some uh, investigation down there, bring back some stuff. Uh, These lands down here that our people are from, many of our people are from, that's why it's important for us to do genealogy tests. Check out who we are and where we come from and where our people went through. If if we're going through this right now, what were our grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-great-great-grandparents going through? So it's important to find out who those people are because they are telling you something. They're trying to contact you. But since many of us call ourselves Africans, we don't hear the voices. So uh, I'm going to be down in Mississippi uh, all next week. Um, have some good thoughts going. Have some good thoughts going out for me because I'm going to try to go down there and bring some information back that will be uh, beneficial to the group. Nisi, did you want to end with something? Yeah, I just want to say uh, to our extended family and all of all of our uh, all of our American people, we want you to wake up. We want you to rise. We want you to know who you are, grasp the fullest part of yourself, and become who you were destined to be. Much love to you until next time. All right. So I hope everybody have a good uh, next ten, twelve days. I will see you when I get back. Uh, support the site, support African Americans Ain't African dot org. Got some pictures on there. We have some good information on the Facebook page. Everybody's putting information. There's information on health. There's information on indigenous people. You might see somebody you know in some of these pictures that people be uh, posting up. But one thing that's important, that's very important, you heard the young lady tonight saying that she was almost 60 and she's still trying to learn. So, like Rick said, people want to learn they tired of this bullshit because that's all it is is rhetoric so i'm very very thankful for all the people who listen and support the show you guys are wonderful we're going to keep it coming as long as you keep coming so we'll see you in another week everybody take care and have a good time have a good night
Peace out. Good night.